Hello, my name is Epi and welcome back to the coffee break in Minecraft. Today is Sunday, November 22nd, 2020. There is a creeper over there, but aside from this single creeper guy, I think we are rather safe, which is a little bit surprising. So let's carefully, oh, hi. Yeah, let's carefully leave the the tower and deal with this golden boy. Hey, golden boy. You're, wow, you're not wanted. But the, the golden boy seems to be persistent. Okay, we managed to, careful horse, to get rid of the golden boy. And yeah, I think we are safe. So let's jump on the horse and travel to the construction site of the museum because I like to plant some trees. I like to plant a jungle tree and a dark oak tree. So let's do this. I'm not sure if the dark oak trees need to be basically placed adjacent to each other or basically diagonal to each other. Ha! The trader's still there. That's funny. The trader still sits right next to the storage building. Of course, I also need an acacia tree sapling, but since steps are not really marked on the... Okay, let's, let's remove this block of dirt that most likely was placed by an enderman, so we really found evidence that endermen are placing the, the dirt blocks somewhere in the world and they're not lost, which is good, which is really nice. Pumpkins have fully regrown, nice. At least I hope that this is what happens and that not the enderman and the dirt block completely disappears so that in the end it's basically a null sum game and not like, okay, over time, if, if you would just keep the game running and running and running, suddenly you would be in a in a region where no dirt is left anymore or so. That would be sad. This would be very sad. Okay, let's secure the horse. And well, I mean it could could it happen? I think the, the enderman will place at least I hope the enderman will place the dirt somewhere where you're still close to it so that it's not like uh, um, so that it's not like okay all the dirt is really removed and placed somewhere else so that there's a huge pile of dirt let's let's think let's think about the position for the two new trees I mean, we have an oak tree. Where, where, where's the oak tree? The oak tree is there. So maybe here-ish. Maybe I need to chop down those trees. Chop down those trees, leave the spruce there. Maybe even chop down this tree. Yeah, th this could be a thing. This could be a thing. All right, let's do this. Let's chop down those trees to free up some space for for our new trees. There are some good news, some very good news. News I haven't anticipated anytime soon basically on uh, Friday Friday early afternoon or so I received an email from the university that the third third review of my thesis has arrived after more than a year of waiting the, the third review has arrived 
which means I most likely will be able to defend my thesis soon. Th this is crazy. This is unbelievable. I, I never, I, I basically gave up hope. It was almost like, like a shock. At this moment, I was, I had a video call with a friend and we were just discussing a few things as the email arrived and I immediately had to share the screen with her to get some some kind of validation that okay this email truly has arrived and I'm not just making things up or so so this, this was this was funny but um yeah we I I got an email that the the third review arrived and now the thesis is put to not public display but within the fac faculty to display so that all the other profs can can check it if they want to and here's the tricky part they could also if they do not agree with the with the reviews give some kind of veto but I hope no one will do this because this would be this would be just bad when someone says okay I'm I'm not happy with what what's going on there so yeah let's let's hope that everyone is pleased and if all goes well I can or I could defend my thesis basically in 3 weeks from now because the the the, the period during which the 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 thesis put to a display within the faculty lasts three weeks and after those three weeks when there's no no issue no veto nothing then I'm allowed to defend so granted that all the the other professors that need to be there so that the defense can take place that they are all available. I could even defend this year, which might sound crazy. Oh dear. So yeah, th this is really great news. I, ca I can't believe that, that I'm really there. And um, okay, I think I think we have enough uh, space to start growing the trees or to put down the trees. All right, I like to have. Yeah, maybe maybe here the the jungle tree. Nice. And over here is a rather open area. So now, now it's, oh dang, I need the I need the other sapling. And um, yeah, th this this is really now a strange strange feeling or a strange situation. I'm. I mean, I prepared the slides for the defense over a year ago. I guess I do have to read them and check them soon to just find out what I did. Okay, I hope this is this is how you do it, or do you need it to to do it like this? I hope it's like like this. We will see. We will see if a tree grows out of this or if no tree grows out of this. Um, yeah, we did we did this. So let's. Let's maybe focus on the on the monument while those trees grow. Grow. I'm still then in the vicinity of it. This area, so trees should continue to grow. The big question now is what kind of material do I want to use? Let's let's store all those things. Ah, oh, dang! Now now I could use maybe all those those wooden slabs. I stored in the storage building. Let's let's get quickly over to the storage building. Grab some more slabs so that I can try out various types of slabs and wood and to just find out what, what kind of material I like to use for for the platform. Also I like to check out the, the original platform how I how I built it to to get some ideas what I can do. So yeah, this is, this is really an interesting thing. Now, now I need to take a look at all my slides I did over a year ago and um, find out what I did 
what I did in my thesis. <laughs> I mean, this is so long ago that I can't even remember what what are all the important things. Well, I can remember most of them, but but still, it, it feels like okay. Uh, what was I doing again? What have I, I done for for research? So yeah, there's that, and of course I have to find out whether it's even possible to defend this year since I need several several professors and examiners so okay I used I used full blocks I basically used full blocks a few slabs for the entrance but then full blocks. Yeah, I think I could do such a thing. I could could start with some uh, with some slabs for getting onto that platform, and then use full blocks to to build the final platform. It actually is quite nice. So maybe I need to. This is nice to see the museum over there. Maybe I need to to build another rail situation. This is really cool. Okay, let's let's go to bed. But um, yeah, because because everything had so many issues and took such a long time, I'm not really in the in the mood, or I don't feel like celebrating, being happy, having a party like situation or so that um, that I am now able or that I should be able to defend soon it's more like okay um, yeah this this happened but let's bring some spruce slabs some oak slabs oh we do have even some acacia slabs Could be also interesting to use this orange wood let's bring the the orange wood and um, yeah, then, I, then I think I do have all the various kinds of Wood. Not sure if I really like to go for acacia because it's rather way too orangey. But maybe I will go for for spruce. Ooh, there's an arrow. Uh, do I have no? I don't have a shield. Maybe I need to craft a shield soon so that I can approach those arrow dispensers safely. And yeah, um, I mean, that's that. Now this there's this three week long period where. Other faculty members can say, nope, we don't agree with what the other reviewers said about the thesis. So, yeah, I, I guess, and, and then there's also the thing that I need to have the defense first before I'm done. So I guess before I haven't completed that defense and before I got the stamp and the signature and what not is what what all all the other things that are that are needed to make things valid. I will remain hesitant <laughs> and um, just 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 wait a little bit. Just wait for for the moment that okay, this this, this is now really it's over. It's done. I I did it. I'm I'm a PhD now, so to say. So, yeah, um, but cool, great news, great news indeed. Just as I said, I'm, I'm a little bit hesitant of being overly excited, <laughs> as yeah, things, things always already demonstrated to be more difficult than. Okay, let's let's get rid of are more difficult and more complicated than they needed to be so yeah that's that's basically it with with the great news um, yeah let, let's try various types of wood here Just see what what color I think is the best one. Of course, I could also go for stone or so. Huh. 
All right, and then let's have maybe from the bottom it should look like like the uh, like stones, and I just do this. Okay, let's let's go down and look up from from below to find out if what 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 color what material looks good. Ow. All right, then I as this is already some time ago. Well, not much time ago, but some time ago, I received. Uh, question from Matthew. Are you planning to run this winter? If so, do you have any recommendations on how to run when there is cold temperatures, snow and ice? Um, yes, I of course plan to run this winter. I am, yeah, I'm, I'm usually running throughout the entire year. I think stone. I think, the, I think this is kind of stone looks best. Wood of course is cool. I think just going for this for this plain stone would be nice. Then inside the stone I could have some kind of yeah, marking for for the center of the world. This might be this might be a thing. Okay, let's let's see. Do I have more of the stone? I think I do. I think I produced several stones. So yes, I, I plan to run during the winter and I did it for several years by now. It the the, the temperature is basically the the least of your problems, I must say. Of course I, I I don't know what with what kind of temperatures you have to deal with, but let's say to a few degrees minus up to minus 10 or so it's all right below that i i haven't really experienced those cold temperatures lately unfortunately due to things like global warming and so on so But temperature in itself is, is not so much of a problem. You just need to, and th this is a thing you need to uh, do for yourself, find the sweet spot between, all right, it's a little bit chilly when you start doing the run, but as you continue to run, you of course start to warm up and you don't get overheated. So basically it's all about yeah, finding, finding the, the right the right um, set of clothes of layers that keep you okay there's there's some uh, there's a block left that keep you warm enough without resulting you in overheating also it's a little bit the question um, how are, are you doing with some wind chill or so because it's really bad when you when you really get sweaty in uh, in the winter and then you have cold wind chill. So personally, I prefer when it feels a little bit chilly when I start doing the run. But um, I really start to warm up, and depending on the temperature, it's even like okay, I'm not not really sweating. It's more like I'm warm. I'm rather comfortable of course maybe some there's some sweat but it's not like running in the summer where you just where you just uh flowing away so to say ah gross um yeah where where you where the temperature where it's really a nice balance between the the heat you're producing and the outside temperature that that you're basically operating at the at the right right temperature this, I guess, is, is, is the best thing. And um, for me, until yeah, several several degrees of freezing temperatures, it's like um, I'm I'm usually getting away with two layers. So throughout the last few years, I always used a sweatshirt and a normal 
running shirt underneath that sweatshirt so I had two layers and this was sufficient for for most winter days. This year I transitioned to a soft, soft shell jacket that also was featured on this um, Hiking the Berchtesgaden Alps video there you briefly saw it and this is also a very basically it's a very very thin layer but um, this far it feels really good it also felt good for temperatures below freezing and so this, this is basically basically it all comes down to wearing the right things finding also the sweet spot do you need gloves do you need some kind of a toque or do you I think this material is, is good we of course need to build this platform in a better way but I think the the material itself looks looks cool so let's um, let's remove all the blocks again for now so that I can come up with a proper layout I think we can do this layout somewhere on the on the ground not here in, in the in the in the air where I can uh, just just change things easier without um, yeah needing to collect all those blocks again when things go wrong but yeah th this, is, this is I guess a promising idea using this uh, with respect to running on snow snow basically is not so much of a problem of course maybe doing intervals or anything where where you really need you know, where you really need some power to propel yourself forward is not that great on snow because it will be slippery it will be more slippery this is already um, noticeable when when I run on some kind of gravel or when I run on when I run on gravel or when I run on on wet tarmac or so sometimes then it already is noticeable so it, it's even more noticeable in snow what I really can recommend for running in the snow is going for some trail running shoes they are they are fantastic for running in snow because then this drastically reduces our the slippiness and they are also most likely waterproof so you even don't have to deal with wet feet which is also nice so for running on snow I would recommend going maybe for for some um, trail running shoes and then you're good to go running on ice however is really a thing that wouldn't work out well so if you're really dealing with super slippery ice then I would recommend try to find a different spot maybe see if you can find some kind of forest roads or something <coughs> Ow. Um, where you where I also do have some kind of some kind of um, are we safe yeah, I think we're safe. We also do have some kind of gravel or so that that reduces uh, the slippiness. But if you're if you're really dealing with true ice and really huge areas of ice, then I guess th this this would this would be the only situation when running would not be advisable because then you then you even would have difficulties with walking. I mean, when you can't walk, then you should shouldn't consider to run, basically. But as long as you can walk, just go for a run, I guess. So th this, w this would be my, my opinion on that. I hope this helped you a bit. And I hope you all found this episode interesting. And I hope you will be joining me next time. So thank you so much for watching. Until next time, my name is Eppy. See you. Thank you.